In this video, we will look at other causes of why the gluteus maximus might not be firing. So, in one of my videos, I showed you how to test the S1 nerve using a patella hammer and the power of a myotome. In this one, I just want to discuss some hip pathologies. And some of those pathologies, think about where the ball meets the socket. It is like saying the cup is on a saucer, and then the saucer is deepened by a rim called the acetabular labrum rim. And if you've torn the rim, then unfortunately, the capsule of the hip is involved. And then if the capsule is involved, then the muscle called the psoas is also involved. And the downside is, is that the psoas, which is your main hip flexor, is now the antagonistic muscle to the gluteus maximus. So I always say to people, if you've got a problem with your hip, i.e. you've got some pathology within a hip joint, then the capsule is involved, the psoas is involved, and unfortunately, that becomes facilitated, and then the gluteus maximus now becomes inhibited as a consequence. And if you try to simply strengthen the weak glute, or the misfiring glute, it's not going to work, because the psoas is sitting there with his arms folded, because he's trying to protect the labrum. Now, other things that can go on within a hip, if your patient is a bit older, and I don't mean that old, I've seen people where they've had hip replacements at 38 years old, but if you've got patients where they, you suspect an OA, an osteoarthritis, then they'll have a capsular pattern, which is also involved the psoas, which now also involves the gluteus maximus switch off. Other pathologies within the hip, there's something called a femoral acetabular impingement, and you've got three types. You've got a cam, which is, think of a camshaft on an engine, or the head where it meets the neck, the neck has an extra thickening and that's known as a cam lesion. If you think about the socket that can pince over, so the, the ball sits in the socket and it pinces, then that would be known as a pincer lesion. And if you have a combination of both, a cam and a pincer, then that would be known as a cam pincer lesion. And they have the three types of an FAI. So whenever you're looking at the hip, you have to make sure that the hip functions normally. And you can do it very simply. We can bring the hip up and we look for 45 degrees of external rotation with no catching, no end feel that is hard. We can look for internal rotation of about 35 degrees. If you've got hip pathology restricted into internal, then that might be a capsular pattern. From here, we can do the Faber test. We can cross the leg over and let this hip drop down. And again, if a leg, remember we've got two legs to test. If this leg stays high, then that would be a positive Fabers. If this leg drops down, then this is a good indication of good flexion with abduction with external rotation. If it's positive, as in it's restricted, then that would indicate some pathological change within the hip. We can also ask the patient to hold that knee and slowly pull that knee towards the chest to see if there is no impingement from here. And then we can do the same where they bring it across to the opposite side. And if she feels any catch in, then you might find you catch the anterior part of the labrum. And then the last test, which I quite like, we can bring the leg into abduction and flexion, but then the test is called the FAIR, so F-A-I-R, or flexion adduction into rotation. And the idea is we can slowly, another name is like the scour test, we can roll it around and there's a little apprehension there of the patient. And if you catch it, then it might indicate there is a little irritation at the top superior part of the joint. And that could be a cam lesion could even be a pincer or could even be a labral tear. The only way to truly confirm would be an MRA, which is an MR arthrogram, um, where we have um, an injection of dye, and that would give a better indication of any pathological changes. If all these tests are negative, you can probably rule out any labral tears, any degenerative changes, and any FAI impingements. And there we have um, some other causes of misfiring of the glutes.